glory. And he is awesome. Thank you, Master. Matthew something. 10. Woohoo! More strategies. God is unloading. As the second wind continues to peel with the first wind and drop provision strategies and wisdom and knowledge. As the testing continues, the challenges continue. Glory. Matthew 10, 34. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. Do not think. Okay. <laughs> Don't think. <laughs> Don't think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? A what? A sword. A sword. Praise God. A sword to what? Fight. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross or his sword and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will what? Will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in my name of a disciple... Assuredly, I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Again, he came to bring a sword. There will never be peace on earth, but you know what? There'll be peace within you. There'll be peace within us, and that's the most important thing, right? Because the battle is the inner battle, isn't it? We have enough problems with the inner battle compared to the outer battle. The sword is to fight. It's to disconnect from the world and worldly distractions that so easily ensnare us. You know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? But Jesus gave us the victory. He gave us the formula. He says you must deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That supersedes steal, kill, and destroy. In 1 John chapter 5, Remember, what's the first thing the enemy wants to steal? Your identity. Your identity. And he can only do that if he can get you out of the presence of the Lord. Or exchange your fulfillment, which gets you out of the presence of the Lord. 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is what? Truth. Verse 7. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood in these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. Again, there are three witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. 
and the three witnesses on earth is the spirit, the blood, and the water. But all these three, they have specific functions. Amen? But every one of them's connection is connected to the third presence. That third presence is called the glory. And that's where true fulfillment is. The third presence is called the glory. And that's what we are always thriving for, the third presence, the third presence of God. In the tabernacle, <clears throat> again, we have three chambers. Each one carries a presence. Well, the third presence, which is the most holy place, is the glory. In Acts 3, <clears throat> In verse 18, Acts 3, 18, let's speak it. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ would suffer, he is thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Now, this is powerful because he's saying, repent, turn away, that the presence of demons will be removed. By what? By the refreshing of the presence of the Lord. Does everybody get it? Demons are not removed by anything else but when the presence of God comes. Even when you command them to go, the presence of God comes to move them. Does everybody understand that? So again, when we repent, it activates the blood, which the blood goes before the spirit. So we're to turn away from the presence of demons. That's what sin is. Every demon carries a presence. A presence of evil is called sin. So when we turn away, <clears throat> when we repent, the blood comes. The spirit has now access to us because we're turning away from the presence of demons. And then the spirit will come Amen? Because of the refreshing of the presence of God to remove these demons. Does everybody understand that? Hallelujah. In verse 20, And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you beforehand, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. Again, this is so powerful. When we're, we repent, we turn away from that. The presence of, de of demons will be removed by the refreshing presence of the Lord. There are three presences that I want to talk about right away. And that's the presence of self, the presence of demons, and the presence of the world. That's why we have the prince of power of air that is a presence. There's a presence of your old self that is still there. And there's a presence of demons. These are three areas that we must constantly overcome. Believe it or not, the worst one is the presence of yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the only way to overcome each presence is by the presence of the Lord. And 2 Corinthians 4. The third presence of God, which is called the glory. Second Corinthians four. See, sometimes you can't overcome certain things because we haven't reached a certain level of the presence. Because depending on the demon itself, the level of the presence of evil, you can't overcome. Because you must have more of the presence of God over the presence of demons. Does everybody understand that? So if you got 40 demons show up, you better be on the third, level, third presence of God to overcome them. Remember, even Jesus 
could not do mighty works because of people's unbelief. Why? Because the presence of demons was causing them by the spirit of unbelief to reject anything which Jesus was trying to do. So he couldn't heal everyone there. Does everybody understand that? Hallelujah. In verse 1, let's read it. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. <clears throat> but even if our message of truth, the gospel, is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. Now, remember, the glory of Christ is called the third presence. Amen? So we see here that they are blinded because the, the presence of evil is still there. The presence of self, the presence of the world, and the presence of demons is still more than God's presence in their life. That's why many people who proclaim to be believers backslide a lot because the presence of God is not there. In other words, we always want to make, again, and you'll hear this over and over, the Lord must be your fulfillment. His presence must be your fulfillment. If his presence isn't your fulfillment, you will look somewhere else to be fulfilled. Is everybody okay? In verse 5, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. Hallelujah. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who is shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In other words, the glory of God is the third presence. It's in the face of Jesus. We see this presence in Jesus, in his face. Does everybody understand? Oh, hallelujah. So the glory is in the face of Jesus, known as the third presence. And what does the Bible tell us? Seek his face. Seek his face. Oh, go to Psalm 105. It doesn't say seek his hand, which too many people seek his hand and not his face. Psalm 105. Start at verse 1. Third presence. Let's speak it. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Why? Because strength and power is in the third presence. Remember his marvelous works which he had done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, your children of Jacob, his chosen ones. So we seek the Lord, his strength. We seek his face, which is forevermore. When you seek the third presence of the glory, there is power to overcome. It overcomes what? The presence of self, the presence of demons, and the prince of power of error called the presence of the world. So the third presence is called the glory where there is strength in power. Psalm 84, which we also...
Psalm 84, verse 1. That's why worship is vital. It is vital. But don't go into worship to see what you can get. Go into worship to give. Does anybody understand that? When you go to give to him, he gives back. But if you're going into worship to receive, there's usually a delay. You first got to sow before you can reap. So if you go in to give and you give it all you got, man, then he gives you all he's got. But once that third presence comes, the glory comes, and you're strengthened, and you know that the power and you have all fear is gone, you got everything. There isn't anything more you really want. <laughs> Verse 1, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. What's he looking for? The third chamber. The third presence. Even a sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Blessed is a man whose what? Strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from where? Strength to strength, in other words, they go from glory to glory. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. How lovely is your presence, in other words, in your tabernacle. Blessed who dwell in his presence. They seek the true fulfillment of his presence. Strength and power is in your third presence. 2 Corinthians 3. Second Corinthians 3. In verse 12. Let's speak it. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a bag or veil over his face, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom or liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, he turns, we, we're turning to his presence, we're seeking his face, and what happens is we're now turning away from evil because the presence of God is coming and refreshing. We now have dominion over the presence of self, worldly presence, and the presence of demons. It takes the third level, the third presence of God Almighty. Does everybody understand that? That's where strength and power, that's why we go from strength to strength and glory to glory because we overcome. Again, our worst enemy is still ourself. The presence of self is the worst thing. You know? Psalm 29. 
I'm 29. Oh, happy days. Psalm 29, verse 1. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. That's power, isn't it? The Lord is over many waters. His voice, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. In other words, the God of glory thunders. It is the third presence of strength and power. Psalm 16. In verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. That means he is your fulfillment. Because he is at my right hand, I'm not going to be moved. Amen? Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My strength and power because I'm in the what? Third presence. My flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Why? Because you sow to the flesh, you reap what? Corruption. In this place, you can't sow in the flesh. Does everybody get it? Unless you are taken out of that presence. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And we know that the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. So when that person has reached that third presence, he's full of joy also. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In other words, he is seeking the face, but the right hand is releasing of God. Set the Lord before us. That's our fulfillment. Because we're connected to the third presence of strength and power, we will not be moved. It is our purpose to maintain focus to fulfill our mission. Keeping distractions and emotions at a distance. Amen? They must be at a distance. Why? So that you can maintain a level of disarming the presence of self, the presence of demons, and the presence of the world. They must be constantly disarmed. And that can only come by the third presence of God, the glory. Then there's no corruption. And as we maintain focus, we walk in the path of life. Provision is provided. And the enemy will try to provoke to mislead us into distractions and away from the third presence. That's his job. By offense, bitterness, jealousy, anything to grieve the Holy Spirit will begin to nullify that and break. It's like if you're out on a boat and the enemy comes and starts putting these little drill holes in the boat, you know. A you know, little, little hole here, a little hole there. It starts with a pinhole and it starts getting flooded more and more and more. The next thing you know, <laughs> you're in trouble. Jude. Judy. Jude, the book of Jude.
verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up. In other words, you're going to build yourself up till you're connected. On your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ until eternal life. And on some, have compassion, making a distinction. It's called discernment. But others, save with fear pulling them out of the fire, having even uh, the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever and ever. So he says, stir yourself up in the Holy Spirit to connect to the third presence and the love of God, where there's joy, strength, and power. Again, we're talking about a time where the second wind is releasing. He's releasing, he's warning, he's telling us there's going to be more challenges, there's going to be more temptations. Why? Because the enemy does not want you to receive what God has. He's going to do everything he can to get you anxious. He's going to do everything he can to bring fear on you. That's his job. He's going to do everything he can to mislead you out of that third presence called the glory where your strength and your power come from the anointing of Christ Jesus. Amen? In Philippians 3. Philippians 3, 17. Is everybody okay? Amen. That's why we love to worship. That's why we love to connect. Amen? That's why he's our fulfillment. But God knows. Everybody says, you know, well, God knows my heart. But most people really don't know their own heart. He knows whether you are truly, he's truly your fulfillment or not. He knows. You can say it all you want. But he knows where your heart's at. So you will, you, we will go through trials and tribulations until the heart gets right. <laughs> until the heart says, you're my everything. Remember we talked about living out of the heart, which is actually living out of the spirit. Amen. <laughs> Philippians 3, verse 17. Let's speak it. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that is, that it may be conformed to his, what? Glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Powerful. So in this we see the enemies of the, uh, uh, our enemies, you know, they're always pay, they're, they want to pay the price to get you out. <laughs> we must come to the place of the fullnesses of exchange that Jesus paid the price for us on the cross. Again, their strength is their shame because they are enemies of the cross. Why? Because they've lost focus. They get disconnected from the third presence or the third chamber. And they begin to drift. 
Again, words are different in walks. James 4. You know, the enemy loves to provoke us. <laughs> if you've ever made a mistake and you're repented, the enemy will be there to pound you as much as he can to try and move you out. That's when you seek the Lord's face. <laughs> In verse 1. James 4, verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your other presence. <laughs> <laughs> Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the worldly presence is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world's presence makes himself an enemy of God. Again, what are the three presences? The presence of self, the presence of demons, and the presence of the world. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Again, this third presence is always battling that area for me and you over our the th other three presents, so that our belief system or faith is constantly connected also. What pleases God? Our faith, which is actually our connection to him, isn't it? The enemy, these are enemies of God. The enemies of God is always losing the third presence or attempting to get you to lose the third presence. That's where your strength and your power fail. For the presence of evil is always trying to exchange the presence of God. You know, we are in a time right now where we're seeing the escalations of the presence of evil. They don't care. They don't care. They promote it tremendously. The extension of Satan's arm is in the media because in that he promotes through information. Amen? See, where there's information... There's a presence. So the knowledge of God assists us because it carries a presence. His word carries a presence. His knowledge is groups of words that we partake. That's why we eat everything we speak. Amen? And if we're eating light, the more presence of God comes. So these are areas that we must maintain and maintain focus. Always being sensitive and discerning, ready to rebuke the enemy, depart, or repent of something that you falsely are agreeing with. When we maintain focus, we are always put the Lord before us. When the Lord is removed before you, you've drifted from focus. Amen? Warning from the Lord. Strategies. He says, seek my face. That means seek his glory. It is the third presence. And in the third presence is power, strength, and victory. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. You said that the anointing teaches us. Please continue to teach us through your anointing, Lord, and prepare us for every attack of the enemy that we may overcome the presence of self, the presence of demons, and the presence of the world. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.
Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the third person.